this is crazy, and I don't know how to say this without being rude, but in Christianity, in religions, you're allowed to have slaves. So you're given a moral choice. Teach your flock and set them free, or gather them as slaves to make money for whatever you want. It's a choice. You're given a choice in religions today. Teach your flock the truth, or just repeat whatever lies that you were told or whatever you want to say and make money. Okay, so what is what is the benefit of like spreading the truth though? Like, why? What is the benefit of knowing about the monsters and stuff? Because, now we're getting somewhere because as children, you know, we have we have a, a war torn world, do we not? A yes. very divided world. Why is the world divided? Because every all of these men keep saying their culture and their god is the right god and the right culture. Now, where did they get it? Off of one body of light. So imagine you have all of these men telling all of their children, we are the one true God with the one true culture. Well, all of their children growing up going, yeah, there is only one true God. Mm. It's all the same one. Yeah, you guys are right, but it's not your specific one. It's everybody's. Hmm. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. You, you, have, you have children growing up. Uh, actually, now we're getting somewhere. Actually allowing... Christians and Hebrews and Muslims and, and just all people to see the real creator and study the real creator. In, this is so crazy in psychology. You study it. They're they're more moral. What do you mean by that? I, I take you. You don't know. You're a Christian. You're whatever. Your morals about following Jesus' footsteps. Don't do bad things. But you still do bad shit. And then we show you the creator. And go, look, it turns water into wine. We teach you some things. And without telling you, now you need to be moral. You just do it all of a sudden. You're like, Shh, this shit is real, real. Like, I always kind of believed it was real. But it's real, real now. Now, I, you know, it's, it's very interesting. We You're kind of losing. <laughs> we, so basically, if I give you a, a, a God to believe out of a book without giving you any facts, I can make you more susceptible to being immoral. Okay. Why? To, Wait, why is that? Like, is that just like psychology? That's just like how. Yeah, just... it's very. Yeah, and they're really not sure. Right? They they just just the way that humans are wired. So we can take people and go, "Here's a god," and go. Now that you believe in God, now we can get you to kill people. Now we can get you to mm -hmm. rape and kill. Now we can get you to steal. We couldn't get you to do those things without giving you God first. I see. And then they ask, now they go, "Why?" Well, because they didn't give them God. They just gave them information about God. Fear-mongering. So mm. we fear-mongered you. And then we kept the actual creator from you. So we get you to this immoral state where you're more susceptible to things. So what's and like the... Oh, sorry. Go, go on. Oh. Oh, th then they're supposed to say, now, here's the real creator. Here it is. And then people go, oh, I better get my shit together. It's real. Like, there's mm. real... It's not just a belief anymore. Right, when like uh, if you go through my door, you're gonna fall off a 50 foot cliff. Let right? me just start telling people that, right? You can't sit through my sliding glass door. If you go out that door, there's a 50 foot cliff and you're gonna fall off of it. Now, I can tell everybody that, and still, some people are gonna open the fucking door and fall off that 50 foot cliff, right? Yes, regardless. <laughs> but if I show you, look, you're gonna fall down there. Do you want to open the door and fall? That nobody falls through. Only right. when I tell you, look, open this door and go through, you're going to fall 50 feet and snap your neck and die. And go, I don't believe you. Let me go through the door. But I say, look, see the cliff? Walk off. Uh-uh. I ain't walking off that cliff. And religion is the same thing. Here's some information, but we're not going to give you the actual facts that stop you from walking off the cliff. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what's the, what's like the biggest truth that like, that can be used to reveal the whole truth. Like, where, where, where do you start? Like, what, what, with what? I do that, the root of David. Word of David. The root of David. Root, root of David. What's the root of David? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 it's very interesting. You study that. It's, you know, it leads all the way back to a body of light in a rainbow. Okay. And that body of light has turned into the seven-card rainbow body in Buddhism, the Hindu gods, the Viking gods, the Greek gods. 
the, the Christian God or messenger of God or son of God, Yahweh from Judaism, the, Gabriel from Islam. It's just morphed into a bazillion different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's still only one thing. Right, right. So just give, here. here's the one that everything else is made off of. Believe it so, or not. Study okay. it or don't. So I get my question kind of came from the monstrance, but I guess what I'm really getting at is is that like really the only way to reveal the truth? Like how else can we reveal the truth? You gotta be born. Now we're gonna get somewhere. So not just Christianity. Christianity funded this experiment, but it was every it was a race, like we have the space race. Right? So in 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 Incan, Aztec, and Mayan, Babylonian, Sumerian, every ancient culture, they talk about people being born who can speak to the light and see things in the light that nobody else in the town or the tribe could see. Mm. We talk about it in the Bible. Take this yellow scroll and eat from it. Speak your words, blah, 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 blah. It's in every religion. They didn't know what it was, right? They didn't know what it was, these older civilizations. So Christianity went out and started, in Judaism and Islam, they started paying for genetic testing. Like, what is this? And they come across going, what's a, it's called synesthesia. And uh, the, it, it shows up in people on the spectrum, depending on how functioning they are. There's a level, yada, yada, yada. So the very top of synesthesia is people who can actually see a body of light that looks just like a human, but without a penis or breasts or, or, or you know, you know male features or female features. You go, well, where do they see that? Right? And this is just genetics. Where does somebody with synesthesia see that? And they go, usually in the beginning of their childhood, being born, they're born seeing it in the clouds. It just mm. exists in the cloud. And as time goes on, as they get older, it, it either goes away or they, show, they talk about other places to see it. So then they go, now we're going to test people with autism and synesthesia to see who actually can see this and we'll keep it a secret. So how can, how can that be revealed to other people then? How would that don't have the synesthesia or now, now, now that's where the mon montrance comes in. It tells you the chosen. And I don't know why they call it chosen. It's just synesthesia. Like you have to be chosen. It's like a birth defect. It's like <laughs> The cho a chosen person, cho chosen by God, not just Christian God or Judaism, every God, religion, so by, by the singular God that rules over all religions. So, will, you know, the, the choice will be made by the singular God that rules over all religions to have somebody born that can see it. And then teach the rest of us how to use the damn sun disk so we can see it ourselves. Basically, is how, how the prophecies state. Right? You can't teach me how to build a spaceship if you if you don't if you've never built one before, correct? Right. <laughs> right. Your neighbor can't use you teach you how to use a monstrance if he doesn't have synesthesia so that he can reverse engineer it and teach you how to use it, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes so, sense. So they say there's somebody, there's a prophecy, the Messiah, the messenger, uh, the Son of God will be born, knowing how to use a monstrance, a tabernacle or a sun disk, and then teach the rest of us. Has that happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I so I, I have people stating that they're able to do it now, but I don't really. I don't. It just seems too eerie to be real. If that makes sense. Okay. I see. What so, you're like, you know, so like so. There's a prophecy about somebody being born that will teach you how your body, your mass, how you're an Israelite using facts of reality. So this is the full prophecy from Judaism. And it comes from Incan, Mayan, Hindus. It's the same one, just it's most famous in Christianity. Christianity made popular a prophecy from every religion. It exists in every religion. Somebody will be born teaching us how we're all Israelites, not just some people who said they were. That's the prophecy in Jew Hebrews today. We're not the, the true tribe of Israelites because we claim to be the only ones. The true tribe is everybody so we are but we're not and that's interesting to know right we are but we're not they they know that they're israelites because every man woman and child is an israelite on the planet but they're not the israelites in the bible because those were fake ones created to convince to to i don't know how to explain it 
Okay, I remember you once also said that the uh, like the writings. I think you were talking about like the books of Moses were just copied from like uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs. No, where yeah, find, no. yeah huh? where, where, where'd you find that out? Where can I read like it's still written? So and this is now we're getting somewhere. I I read things differently than me and you, right? So you're told in religions. Your, your stories are parables. They contain apocalypses. As a kid, I go, what's a parable? They go, a religious story created to get a moral point across. Well, what's the apocalypse? They go, well, once you get the moral point, there's a lifting of the veil. Well, what's the lifting of the veil? It's hidden information. But no, the, nobody gets it. The gate is small and narrow. Very few people get the hidden information. I got autism. Like, I don't care about the moral point. I want the hidden information. Right. I want the hidden information. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses. Moses. Well, yeah. Before Moses became Moses, Egypt, Babylonian, Sumerian used to wit worship Moses, the God, who separated drinkable water from the Red Sea. It was a process. And the really? kings got, people got jealous. Like, you can't worship. I'm the king. Not Moses. I, like, I'm, you, we have a God. And me, the king, is in, you know, standing over you as the ruler in God's place. And then men and women started worshiping Moses, osmosis. Like, uh, you're the king, but osmosis is the one giving my children drinkable water. Osmosis, Moses gave me the, the, the water for my animals to survive in the desert. We're alive today because of Moses. And osmosis, like that refers, because osmosis is like, I know with our cells, it's like what allows them to like move around. Desalination, yeah. There's actual now we're getting to oh. desalination. So in the, uh, separating brackish water, so I, it says salt water, but brackish water, which is uh, salt water mixed with regular water. In the Nile, it gets brackish water. So you need osmosis baskets to, on a wheel. They take water out of the Nile River and sp spread it over over an area for. Natural osmosis, or they actually put it in in a membrane, and you can like it's so fascinating that they knew this before Egypt was even a country, or you know was even a, a civilization. Samaria and uh, Babylonian ancient, they had desalination plants. And they go, well, why didn't they just have a well? Well, you can't dig a well for a town with a half a million people. You need a desalination plant in the desert, and people don't think about that. Like, yeah, you're right. You can't half a million people with the even a few hundred wells, they tap the water out first thing in the morning and there'd be no water for them. How do they get water? They go, well, they had these wheels with baskets. Well, what did the fucking wheels with baskets do? They pumped water out of the, out of the Nile, brackish water or seawater. And then they used osmosis to separate the salt from the water. And then people started worshiping the equipment as God and the process as God. Hmm. And it's literally written in stone. Like, this is not God. It's osmosis. It's not your God. Do not worship Moses. It's a. It's how we get water. Oh, okay. So they just kind of, so the writings then, those are just, what, what, who wrote those then? Who wrote those? Mm -hmm. Like, was it the people, like the engineers of this technology? Or was it like? I think they just collect, now we're going to get somewhere. It, it talks about uh, gathering all the information about God. And then you read everything. It's just science. Yeah. They gathered. They gathered. Your Aztecan. What's your number one technology? Okay. Your Mayan. What's your number one? Your Egyptian. What's your number one technology? And it literally the most advanced information in the whole world back then came from fucking rainbows. <laughs> like, wait, really? Yes. That, well, natural sciences, right? A, a rainbow does certain things, right? So you're studying. So you, I need all of the world's most advanced information. Nice. What all surrounds a rainbows? Well, what does a rainbow do? It gives you your daily bread. It a dies rainbow? again on Easter and new Christmas. Hold on. All right. So let's start with the daily bread. I, okay. I understand the kind of the sun doing that, but how does a rainbow do that? Well, the sun, now we're getting somewhere. The sun is the center of the, uh, or the rainbow is the center of the sun spectrum. It's the center of the light, the center of the universe. You think about everything you have to exist came from the a rainbow, the center of the universe, the center of light. It's the center of the light that everything you have came from. What do you mean think by about. center of the light? The, what is the electromagnetic spectrum? The light that gave you everything that you have. Yes. What is the rainbow? The center of that electric oh, spectrum. Oh, okay. I see what you're getting at. The center. Okay. It just made the center of your universe visible for a split second. It's the doorway to the other side. Okay. 
So the Bifrost. You think about it? in Egypt or uh, uh, Viking the Bifrost before Islam existed. Before Islam existed, Viking uh, kings were carried up to the vault of Valhalla or in the bow of a cloud with their winged horse. It's in the Tor it's in the Quran now. That's what happened to Muhammad. Oh. So I'm saying they gathered all of the information about rainbows and turned it into a, and turned it into Abrahamic religions. There's a, the Bi was a Muhammad. And I go, well, did, did the Vikings do that? And it, it, Muslims go, nope, not at all. And they come back and go, whoa, yeah. I just learned from you, Martin, having to go research on my own. The Vikings, who existed before Islam, had all of their kings carried up to the vault of heaven on a horse, riding up on a rainbow, just like the story of Muhammad. I go, yeah, thousands and thousands. 10,000 people did it before Muhammad. Okay, so what does that mean then? Riding up a horse to the boat? Nothing. It's just, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, now we get somewhere. Uh, you know, if it's in, okay, where did it come from first? And that's where people don't have a problem. Like, this message, it's the words of God from so-and-so. Well, it might be the words of God, but it wasn't given to the person who wrote your book. So where did the words of God, who was given those words of God, if that's what you want to call them, so I can have them in their original form? They're words of God, okay. So then I need them from the original speaker, not the translator of the translator of the translator of the translator. <laughs> They're my AI. We're 50,000 we're 50, translations into the word of God. Mm. Well, I want the original. Right. Well, what did the original say? Everything in Abrahamic religions, is al it's already written. Yeah. <laughs> like, if it's already written, why can't you just tell them in the original form? Well, it's a lost, it's a lost language. Now, it's something we don't speak. But it, it, is it, you know, let's get somewhere. Is it a lost language? Because in freaking Islam, on their history channel, they're like, the Vikings, before Islam existed, this king, this Viking conqueror, carried up to the vault of Valhalla on a horse, riding a rainbow. And then you go, yeah, uh, Muhammad got carried up to the, the vault of heaven on a winged horse, riding a rainbow. Well, where did you get that from? Oh, it, it, it came from us. And that's the first the story ever existed on the planet. Like your own TV just told me, <laughs> you guys got it from somewhere else. Well, why would like they do own, that? Because <laughs> people don't have the now cognitive dissonance. I don't have the ability to understand what I'm saying. Disproves what I believe. Mm. Now we get now psychological manipulation. I, I don't have the ability to psychologically grasp if what I'm saying contradicts what I believe. So, do you think they're almost like? doing that to make people even more attached to their own beliefs oh now, we're getting, now, now, now you're getting somewhere huh. people who have an ego power. problem and attached to their own beliefs aren't the type of people you want finding the creator because it does dole out a lot of knowledge that can give you power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i will give each religion here's an ego trap if you if you fall for the ego trap you're going to be forced to talk into jesus in your head or the creator in your head but never in real life and they never in real life. We'll just give you a we'll give you a fake one to worship and speak to, so that you don't get any power from the real one and wield it over men like all other men have done in the past, like history, his story. What does his story state about mankind and the Creator? We're fucking evil. We're evil. Right. Okay, sorry, I missed a little bit of that because I had people coming in the house. Um, okay, but I wanted to ask also, so what is the, you said, you mentioned the power of the creator. So what is that? What is that specifically? What are these people, the power that people are trying to keep from others? It's just knowledge. Just knowledge? Literally just looking at it, you go, oh, that's how it turns water into wine? That's how it does my daily bread? That's how I evolved to be here? Just looking at it. The most advanced knowledge at the top of every field of science and medicine, just looking at it. Well, if I'm going to charge you money for it, I can't have you looking at a free source. Mm. So it's just all its just all a money and power grab. That's well, all it is. Think about this. If you can look at a picture of a body of light today, just looking at it will allow you to understand how it turns one uh, five loaves of bread and two fish and a chum to feed 5,000 people. Just looking at it, you learn how to cure a leper. Just looking at it. So like... <laughs> 
Yes, yeah, so like everything, everything today that makes money is all because some people just didn't reveal want or hiding this information from us. So that's yeah, like the now, we're, now we're getting somewhere. The root of David, or the root that was used to divide and conquer. I could just show you the Creator, but then I can't make a lot of money. And I can make even more money if I divide you and conquer you. Your perspective is right. Give me more money so we can build our army. But your neighbor's perspective is right. I hope they give me more money so we can build our army. Whoever's in your house, their perspective is right. I hope they donate the most money so they get the best army. Hmm. But, but your perspective is right too. Right? So you're going to donate money to try and get your, your, your army the best? And all of your armies, I'm not realizing... You were created to serve and worship the same God. Just now some men have led you astray. So what is, okay, so what is the, the outcome of this all? Like, what is the end result now? Like, we all just, like, fight each other and kill each other and... Yeah, misery. Why, why do these people, like, okay, I get, like, they want the money and power, but, like, then if everyone's miserable, it's going to hit them too. Don't they, like, realize that? Yeah, but if, if, if I can have somebody attack you and make you even more miserable than my existence is, then mine isn't so bad. I'm a shitty person. I, I'm not a very good person. I pretend to be, but I'm not a good person. Well, hey, my existence isn't so bad compared to yours. Now that I've sent some people to terrorize you. <laughs> That's a terrible Everything's way. relative. Right? Everything's relative. Yeah. The higher up you make it in society, the worse off your life is. And since your life is so much worse off, you need to make sure there's people beneath you. So it's not so worse. It doesn't seem so bad. Okay, so then now there's all these people that are missing this information. But part of me wants to say it's also on them because they're being ignorant. So Not really, though. They're being ignorant because they were brainwashed. Well, isn't that just like they have a weak mind to be brainwashed? Well, not, not if they were grown up brainwashed. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes, if now if you're an adult and you move into this kind of shit, it's your fault. But uh, children, like children, children, it's not. That's illegal. I mean, it should. It's illegal on all types of levels, except for publicly. <laughs> you think right. it's so crazy? Like it's illegal as all get out, but set publicly, which is fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting. That's interesting. So it's like, if it's the children, we're not even going to realize the effects of it now. It's going to be like 10 years from now when we start seeing all these, like, all this kind of damage that comes from this. Well, we're, all, we're actually already seeing it, right? Do you think about this right now? The, the, the number one seller of heart medication, I won't name any names because I keep getting myself in trouble. The number one uh, manufacturer of heart medication has stated if they can get third world countries to adopt the vegan, vegetarian, and American diet high on produce, vegetables, their drug can be the number one prescription drug in third world countries too. Oh. This is, a drag, this is so interesting. We're telling you, eat your fruits and vegetables. They're so good for you. And Big Pharma is sitting back going, if we can get the rest of the world to adopt this high fruit and vegetable diet, our drugs will be number one in their country too. We can make disease. We can make heart disease the number one killer in Africa, and cancer the number one, the number two killer in Africa. But first, we have to get them to eat their fruits and veggies. <laughs> That's fascinating. Like you're talking about, uh, you know, two sets of beliefs that contradict themselves. I believe fruits and vegetables are healthy for me, but I know today, big farm and Western medicine are stating if they can get third world countries to eat. The same produce that you do, heart disease and cancer can be the number one and number two killer in other countries too. Plant, they're planning how we can make it the number one killer, so we have more patients for heart disease in their country and more patients for cancer. So they're, it, think about it, they're planning on making cancer and heart disease the number one killers in other countries where it's not today. They're planning on it. Oh man, That's mass genocide. So it's not it's not all fruits and veggies. It's specifically the fruits and veggies that they're producing. Or that they... It's all. It's all. All. Really? This is what people don't understand. If I don't eat sugar, my body has an epigenetic switch that purges 
toxins and damaged cells. What do toxins and damaged cells do? Lead to heart disease, cancer, and other illnesses. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of fruits and vegetables, and why religions in the beginning, Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit, in the absence of that sugar, your body purges those damaged cells and toxins that cause diseases and illnesses. If I eat that sugar every day, that cell that has toxins that can give me cancer gets to linger for months and months, years. I'm giving it the opportunity to give me cancer. They, right? I, I had to be convinced to give myself cancer. And that's where I like just fascinating. Like, just don't eat fruits and vegetables. They, they actually have the cancer-causing agents in them. It's okay, a what, Go ahead. What about grains like wheat and oats? You can ha now. Here's the thing: you can have them, but just like your ancestors, once you eat grains, you have to have periods of time where you're doing farm work, high intensity labor. Mm. You have to have you have to have that period of time where I burnt all the sugar out of my bloodstream. So I ate grain, and then I I did four sets of seventy five push ups, four sets of seventy five squats as fast as I could, and I did my kettlebell as fast as I could. I had no sugar in my system to where I could feel it. Mm. Does the same go to like uh, like back when we were hunters and gatherers? Because like gatherers would gather berries and nuts. So when they would eat berries, it was like they were had to gather them and put in the work to do that. So it's not that they're inherently bad. It's more that it's no, what's bad is having them without doing the work required. Now we're getting somewhere. They're inherently bad without massive amounts of exercise. Mm -hmm. And now we get somewhere. The, the for the FDA and the and the United States, well, every kid's getting their three hours of exercises to eat these fruits and vegetables and not get the diseases. No, they're not. Nope. <laughs> now we get somewhere. We can tell you to eat your fruits and vegetables because every man, woman, and child on the planet in the United States today is getting their minimum three hours of high intensity exercises. And I call bullshit. No, they're not. Mm. There's not a single kid I know today doing three hours of exercises so they don't get cancer mm. from fruits and vegetables. Because you never told them that. Like, it's a lie. Like, you kept it a secret. Yep. Like, well, they know. Hey, they all know. No. No, they don't. You mm. lie. And that's where the, the trick is. No, you can have fruits and veggies. But you you have to be able to still mo remove all of that sugar, those carbs they put in your system, out the same day. After you have your fruits and vegetables, you have to enter a bout of ketosis. It's the only thing that removes the carcinogens that lead to cancer. Mm, mm, mm. That's freaking biology, and it's a secret. Like, so it's like it's, it's honestly a really good thing that you're out here like sharing all this because otherwise, I feel like a lot of us would get cancer and, and heart disease and all that. So I don't know, man. I now we're getting, now you're getting somewhere. You would have gotten cancer following the diet that. That we tell the children of the United States to follow the best chance of getting heart disease and cancer. Well, that's kind of fucked up. We're giving your your parents. We're told to give you a, the diet that guarantees somebody else the greatest chance of you dying a miserable death. That's fucked up. That's well, murder. Yeah. It's no, not that. No, that, that is murder. That is murder. But like you said, well, you imagine so like your, 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 your dad gets heart disease. He goes to a cardiologist. The cardiologist goes, his, his little palm pilot, if he stops eating sugar, his body will eat the cholesterol out of his arteries and cure his heart disease. He'll never have to come see me again. Mm. His wife will be a widow and his kids won't grow up fatherless. And the heart doctor goes, can I interest you in a prescription? This will maintenance your heart disease. Now we're getting somewhere. Can I give you this? Well, what's the, what's the side effect? Well, you might die. You might, you might have anger, but there's no side effect. Uh, severe mood swings where you might come delusional beat your children or your wife. Now, I have two options. I can give you the cure in my book here or give you the prescription where you're going to have to come see me next month and I can bill your insurance every month. Look, bro, can you come uh, take this pill and come see me? And I literally am looking at the cure while, while your dad's staring at like. Another father gonna die, but shit, I'm gonna make a hundred bucks. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All scam. I hate this. Oh, this is not. That's not. This is not okay. Why? Why do these? Do these people have no morals? Like, do they have no like moral compass or anything? Nothing that tells them what they're doing is like wrong. Well, they or... do. It's called the dollar. It's called. Yeah, they do. I mean, think about this. 
you know, you, you th think about it. You have cancer. You come to me, top specialist in the world for cancer. I'm like, you think you have cancer? Well, I go, I feel this way. I feel this way. I go, well, the symptoms lead us to believe you might have cancer too, but I won't know, sir, unless you authorize me to do a PET scan on you. Okay? Can, will you authorize me to do a PET scan? Do you want to know what that is? What I'm going to do is take all natural sugar from fruits and vegetables, since we know that's what cancer craves the most. I'm going to mix them, that sugar, with radioactive isotopes and put it in your veins. Oof. And your cancer craves natural sugar so bad, those radioactive isotopes will build up in any tumors that you have that are feeding off that sugar. Uh -huh. So as your cancer fights to get all the sugar out of your bloodstream, it's going to latch onto these radioactive isotopes too. So I can take a picture and I'll see your cancer under a picture because it's eaten the sugar that I knew it was going to eat. The sugar I know it needs to metastasize and kill you. So I, I pump you full of sugar and I come back and go, look, your cancer, yeah, stage three. How do I know it's a stage three? Did you see how fast it ate the sugar out of your system? Mm -hmm. All of the radioelastic isotopes are now in the cancer immediately. Mm -hmm. It was rap, rap, just couldn't get enough of that sugar. So, now that we know you have cancer by feeding your cancer sugar, I'm going to need you to drink some fruit smoothies, some, some vegetable smoothies, basically just giant cups of sugar. So hopefully your cancer will metastasize into something terminal that I can give you chemo and radiation for. It. Okay? Now, I could have told you, stop eating sugar, starve that cancer. Do high-intensity exercises. So starve that cancer and then supercharge your signal that's telling those cancer cells to commit suicide or be cannibalized. Let's hit it three fronts. Let's starve it, let's try and cannibalize it, and let's tell it to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't do that as your cancer doctor, though. I told you, hey, you should drink a giant cup of sugar in the morning called a fruit smoothie, and then come back in 90 days so I can check to see if you have full-blown cancer. I told, as, a, as a cancer treatment doctor, I told you how to go home and maximize your disease for the maximum amount of misery for the maximum amount of money. Go, go Now now that we know you might have cancer, or it's on the borderline, right? it's on the border, let's metastasize it. Let's make it full-blown cancer. That's fucked up. That's really messed up. That's terrible. Now, now, I say a good teacher points. Am I making that up? Do they do they not use sugar and radioactive isotopes to know if you have cancer? No, they do. And kids come back and go, fuck, they know that because the cancer needed the sugar in the PET scan to survive. Yeah, think about that. Mm -hmm. The cancer doctor said, it needs, cancer needs this sugar, so we'll give it sugar to see if you have cancer. We only know you have cancer because we gave it sugar. Mm. And then we sent you home telling you to eat fucking sugar. Oh, man. Oh. So they know So they know it. They know what they're doing. They yeah, exactly you get what I'm saying? We, how do we know you have cancer? Sugar. Yeah. What did we tell you to do after we found out you had cancer from feeding it sugar? We sent you home to feed it sugar on your own. All right. Well, is it everyone that knows this? Or is it just some people in the medical field themselves have been misled and aren't looking at so the information? Just, um, not everybody. Now we're getting somewhere. Like I asked a cardiologist about the heart disease thing, or I asked a cancer doctor. In the beginning, 90% of the time, they have no fucking clue what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. says, as I speak to them, they go, yeah, autophagy, that's a real thing, yes. Cannibalism, suicide of cancer. So like, yep, yep, your body has a signal. That's true. It, your cancer, it's, it's not listening to the signal. You're right. They're like, yep, Martin, you're right. Cancer is your cell not listening to the signal to get rid of itself. No, was starving it, making it weaker, while exercising, turning up that signal. Like my signal to, for my cancer cell to commit suicide or, or be cannibalized as a, as a one every day. It's just at a one. Let me crank that bitch up to a 10. Let's see how that works. Well, we don't know how that works because we never tell anybody to crank their shit up to a 10.
Mm. Well, well, why not? Well, because then they're not patients anymore. You know, what? So you mm-hmm. do know how it works. You know, they're not mm-hmm. patients anymore if they crank it up to a 10, so you don't have any mm-hmm. patients you tell crank it up to a 10. So why are so many people bound by the, the money? Like, why is their morality bound to the money? Like, why are you not? Like, how did you... Because you're, you're, you're tied... Not, you know, money is tied to God. You come to our church, we pray for you, we, you give money. We've associated money with godly beha- works. You got the words of God? Well, because you had to give money. I so, is that is that Because that's not true for my church, at least. Well, how does your church pay its bills? Where does its money come from? I mean, I guess there are people like, I guess, yeah, tithes and stuff like that. You know, but, what I'm saying? Not for you, but the majority of people who make it to give to give money, tithe. Why do you give tithe? In exchange for the information they're giving you. In exchange for that, you know, we, we tithe. And it's, it's just psychology. And that's the problem. People don't have the degree of understanding in psychology. Like, mm-hmm. you go, yeah, it's the money. They go, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, you know, you tie it. Well, in religions, you know, we're, we're rewarding. We rewarded you. That, that, you know, we tied that, the creator to money. We tied your, your, your beliefs and your, your information surrounding God and existence. Yeah, but so usually, I'm, usually people only give like, I think it's like 10% of their income or something. So it's, it, it can't be like, that can't be the, the entire reason you're they're. You're missing the, your, your psychology, psychology, your psychology doesn't recognize a percentage, your subconscious mind. That is more powerful than your conscious mind. Now we're getting somewhere, right? Your subconscious mind is more powerful than your conscious mind, correct? Mm-hmm. So if I want to give you information that you won't believe, I would give it to your subconscious mind so that your conscious mind can go on thinking it whatever it wants, regardless of the facts I got you to believe. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have you, you think God has nothing to do with money, but I'm going to associate you giving money. To your subconscious mind and God, because it's more powerful. So, in the back of their mind, people just associate this idea of having more wealth with having more righteousness or something like that. There you go. There. Now we're getting somewhere. It doesn't matter, right? Money. We've tied God to money. You're, but your sub consciously, I don't care what you think. And to be real, even like in a, in 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 psyops for military and intelligence, we don't care what you think. We care what your subconscious mind thinks. Mm-hmm. Tell me whatever you want. I don't care. That's what you. Those are the lies you tell yourself. Uh, now this is interesting. I need to get past the lies you tell yourself. That's a hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, uh, do you even recognize you lie to yourself? Nope. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I don't even recognize that I lie to myself. Well, that's great. Because if you don't recognize you lie to yourself... I can recognize those lies that you tell yourself, and then I can use your own lies to seat my own destiny. So how did you manage to escape from this uh, subconscious brainwashing? I was never in it. This was like, I'm, I, I, I think, like, I, I was, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just different. So I, I could see a body of light, and my whole life they would just tell me it's the rainbow body in Buddhism, it's Jesus, it's all this crap. And I, yeah, yeah, sure, I believe in Jesus, or I believe in you know, God, whatever, I believe in whatever, but I'm still going to, you know, my subconscious mind, now we're getting somewhere, they're telling me something to seed my subconscious mind, but what they don't realize is that the truth was already seeding my subconscious mind before they were. It makes uh. it kind of difficult. So, yeah, I, I, you can't see the body of light, I can seed your brain with anything I want about it, right? Mm. Now your brother, your brother, say your brother has autism and he can see it. Well, I can try. And see anything I want, but it doesn't mean it's going to stick because the truth is in front of his face every day and I can't block it because I can't see the truth. Right? I have synesthesia. Right? You can hurt me and you can hide things from me, right? But if you can't see what I can see, you can't hide shit from me. And I think that's fascinating existence. You can hurt me and start me over. There's no such thing as the body of light. There's no such thing as the creator. We're not going to give this Martin any information. He's got a new traumatic brain injury. I'm like, you hid what you could see from me, but it's still standing there because you can't, you couldn't see it. They the can't movement. see, they can't hide the things that you can see, but they can't. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can, like, you can, 
can only hide from me what you can see. If you can't see something, how do you hide it? Right. One guy, like, like, you hurt me because I keep talking about the creator and the body of light. And then you want to hide information from me so that I don't talk about it anymore. So you hide everything in my life. But can you hide the creator if I can see it? And you can't. No. What do you do about it? There's nothing. It's out of your control. Hmm. And that's what these jackasses don't understand. It's out of their control. Is it? Are you able to do this? Is this like a genetic thing, like an evolutionary thing, or is it like a like a psychological thing? Like, do you have any reason, idea why you're able to, like, why you have the synesthesia? Like, what what genetic. causes it's genetics? Just, I, it's just, so people are like, oh, you're chosen by God. And I'm like, no, it's just genetics. Mm. Like, throw shit in a throw things in a blender and see what comes out. Do any of your relatives have this? Have synesthesia? So some of them are super geniuses. So genius in my lineage is like huge, like in real life, like some big time geniuses going all the way back to my ancestors, like trace my lineage of people like, damn. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's stuff in the, in the wood pile. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Dang. I wonder like, I want, I sometimes wonder like, what if I'm seeing stuff too? And I just don't know, like, how would I know? <laughs> You get so there, yeah. So you live in a social structure, and so I talk about if people ask me autism from four years old to kindergarten, I go why? Because if you have synesthesia and high functioning autism, there's fucking problems. And I'm sorry to use I use a lot of swear words because I grew up with a lot of old men, but there's <laughs> problems for reals. There's problems, and if 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 you people are like I don't know if I have synesthesia or not, I'm like oh I know you don't because you don't know if you have it or not. Like if you have it, like you've already been sat down with some people. Like, you know, what what was like, what was one of the problems for you? Like, what was the example of problem? It don't matter. It's just problems. Just like ways you behaved or something that people saw. And it's like, ah, that's not normal. Like, yeah, yeah, that and, you know, um, but you know, you don't have to stay in class. You don't have to go to school. I mean, you don't have to really do anything. Why is that? Because they like when you're a kid you're a brat and you realize, Oh, you, you want me to answer that question? Well, in order to answer that question, I'm not listening. Huh? <laughs> you want that answer to that math question? You want that answer to theology? You want that answer in science or engineering? Yeah, I can knock out that schematic, but I feel like, I feel like turning on the faucet and flooding the room here. <laughs> like, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'll get, I'll, I'll get you your answer, but, I, you know, I feel like breaking all the windows out of this building real quick. <laughs> and they well, let you do that. So then you're like, okay, this just seems normal. Hmm. Hmm. There's problems. Like, you, you know what I mean? Realize. Huh? Because they don't point it out to you, so you don't even realize. Oh, man. But I went around, like, kicking people in the nuts and, and doing this, this uh, smash your balls te- pecker type move that I got taught for self-defense. Oh man! Literally, like the, the the when I was in uh, Mary Purcell, the the older kids, like the fifth or sixth grade, the the class, they would always get all the younger kids to come over and and and, and so I would fucking hurt them. Oh, <laughs> oh man! And then there's things like the older guys they thought was a joke, like you know, there's like a five year old, and then there's like nine year olds all just fucking laughing and shit, ten year olds, you know, and uh, all through high like the high school kids are in in, in uh, junior high. Seventh grade, the high school guys would come around in their trucks. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand. Like, there's pro- like, because you do those things and people get in trouble. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm. I do those things and they're like, you got to just leave them alone. Like, oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. He, like, Martin just spelled his name. Like, literally, I went around one one year with a super soaker, filled it with gasoline, and I would burn my name in yards. Oh, man. <laughs> so it was uh, uh, the Centurions, or what was it? I saw some some cartoon, some knockoff G.I. Joe Centurions underwater, and the guy had a flamethrower underwater, hmm. and I went, ooh. And just for, I went, and I was like, okay, I, I, I cut the the nose off of my, off of my um, super soaker, and I replaced it with a brass-fitting, for, for, I don't know what it was for, for water, but I replaced the plastic with, with brass, like a half inch, 
so it wouldn't melt. And I just literally <laughs> take a lighter and light the front of it. And it held like two barrels like this big of gasoline. So like two gallons of gas. And I look like if you can cock the hose that's in there to get the gasoline that normally gets water. If you tape it up in the hose so it's up out of the gas, so it's not pumping out water, it just gets a spray. <laughs> just a huge flame instead of a stream of, like, yeah. like. Oh, man, it sounds like it's both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> you know, I, I had a party one time, and my friends came over, and um, there were so many people on the roof that caved in. <laughs> oh, no. Is everyone all right? Yeah, everyone always gets... Well, my friend... Uh, what's his name? Was it Kyle? Or Rick? I can't remember his name. Bad with names. One guy got a nail in his ass, and that was it. Oof. That so one guy put a nail through his butt. Hopefully he has the like, yeah, so, yeah, so... As I talk about my childhood, so... They bought... During that time, it was one of my birthdays. They bought so much fireworks and so much beer and shit like that. And I had such a panic. I was like, you know, my, my mom was violent. So I'm like, you don't understand. We're getting beat. Like, my brothers are getting beat. We're getting fucking beat. And I went in my room and I just cried and locked myself in the closet. And um, is his name uh, Ryan Mondek? I don't even know why. I'm, I don't only know this name because of the, this. He opened the closet and brought me out because I was just having a fucking fit. And they had cleaned everything. Hmm. They picked up the cigarette butts that the neighbors were, like the construction workers would leave in the, coming down the street. Huh. You know, they every, like everybody, like extra. Yeah. So yeah. The, the only thing that was left was the, was the roof that fell off. <laughs> how, did, how did that settle out? It went, so, no, you don't understand. So like we lived in this, in five acres where you have to pay people to come and remove trees that fall in your yard and you got to limb things. And there was a lot of work that needed to be done. And because the roof fell, they overcompensated a bunch of other shit. So, like, you know, you know, they ended up doing like ten thousand dollars worth of work, overcompensating for a two thousand dollar hole in a roof. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Because so, I mean, to... yeah. So people were like, my mom was pissed, but she was like, literally, this is my mom's like, she's pissed, but she's like, but in another note, we would never have been able to afford all these repairs and all this maintenance. Mm. So, I guess I guess it all worked out in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Weird you were stuff like that. oh, I was just guys when you were when you were in a, when you were a child, did you also like have these kind of ideas you have right now about the creator and all that? Mm -hmm. Really, it goes all the way back then. Yeah. So most of the time in my younger days, I would just speak to people. So they take me like I'd go around with people in different churches and listen to their debates and shit like that, and then they just let me speak about stuff. And then I would just give them my ideas. Like, here's my idea. You did know? they like it? Did they Did they accept it? They did? Oh, yeah. They thought it was great. <laughs> but not the not the pastors, though, huh? Well, so, yes and no. So, you know, Christians were like, this guy's the Christian. Like, it turned into, like, everybody was like, he's our religion. Mm. He belongs to us. He's Muslim, not Christian. He's Christian, not Muslim. He's Hebrew. Mm. That Christian type of deal, and in real life, everybody killed each other. Mm -hmm. It's like they get really bad. Like so, so, they start collecting my information, and it starts making more sense, and more sense, and more sense, and then you get some guy going, "We can make a lot of money. This is very powerful." Mm. And then somebody else goes, "Well, I think we should be in charge, and we can make all the money." And then somebody else goes, "Well, you know." Why don't us Muslims be in charge and make all the money? Mm. Well, us Hebrews, you know, we, we already got something lined up for this, for kids like this already. And it, like so on and so forth. And then everybody's like, no, no, I am. I, I, I decided it's me. And some other man's like, no, 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 we decided it's us. Mm. And then it turned to screaming. Mm. And screaming turned into pushing and pushing turned into punching. And punching turned into everybody literally stabbing each other and oh, no. like calling people. And um, I just I sat down on the on the floor, covered my head, just stopped. Yeah, because there was nobody left. Nobody left because everybody's dead. 
Oh. Like, not because they were like, okay, no more violence. They were just like, there's, there, there's no more, there's no more violence. Like there wasn't like we're, you know what I mean? We ran out of, we ran out of anger. They just ran out of people that utilize that anger. That's dark. Yeah. Like the, you know, you know, they didn't go, okay, we got to stop and be good people. It was, there's nobody left. Like it stopped because there's, you know. Did that like traumatize you from sharing your information? Kinda. Did you like stop for a period of time or, or anything? No, I got curious as to see. So I got curious. So I got curious in death. Mm. I wanted to know. So like it, all these people died. And then I was like, you know, where does their body of light go? Where did that, what happens in that little blink of an eye? Right, right. It's a good question. And, yeah, I got, I got really infatuated with that. Cause let's just say drop people like flies. Mm. Not to be rude, like, what am I supposed to do? I'm a kid growing up, and there's all these people dying all the time. How do you process that? Yeah, you got to put a reason to it. Can you imagine? I tell you today as a kid, <clears throat> every once in a while, the military's going to show up, and they're going to try and kill you. Every once in a while, the military's going to show up, and they're going to try and kill your wife. I don't think I'd be able to, like, handle that as a kid. I wouldn't be able to process what that even means. But then they come. They do. They come. They're like money, power, ah, power. We we'll so rich, so much power. It's scary to have people like that. Have they ever come to your house? How how do you stop them? <laughs> I think I'll, I think after like thirty people die. Uh, like far enough the chain of command gets involved for things oh so you're telling me it's not like the higher ups that are doing this it's like from like lower I really don't pay I don't yeah, yeah. once it gets you know it gets to such a huge deal then somebody ends up stepping in but it has to turn into a, like a big deal hmm. and I just imagine like how the hell did they cover this up for so long like it's a big deal like here's my AI it's a big deal like I don't know how the hell they get away with it for so long like it's yeah. a deal like it's amazing that you're alive still from if they from all that. Yeah, this is I keep waking up. Huh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I I find it interesting though how like they've made several attempts, but like they've they've always it seems like obviously they haven't come with like a whole like squadron or anything like that. It's well, always yeah, like yeah, now that's what I'm saying. That's why people I think I'm alive today because people want videos. Like they sent a whole fucking crew, like. So uh, it, one time the, the guy on the phone, you know, cause the bad people were doing bad shit. And he said, well, it's not as if we talking about the soldiers that died. Well, it's that it, we expected those casualties. We didn't send our best. And you think about it, like, you knew these men were going to die. You sent them here to die. And think about how fucking scary that is to be on the phone. Like, yeah, well we knew that we knew they were going to die. It's not as if that we sent the best. Did you kill them? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying there was a lot of them. A lot of soldiers. And the chain of command goes, well, it's not as though we expected them to live. Did they kill themselves? Sometimes. Really? I just ask you. Give a choice. Give a choice. What's it going to be? I don't know. What am I choosing between? <laughs> Life and death. Pick one. Life. <laughs> death and death. Well, I don't know how to. I don't know how to freaking explain it. But it's just fucking asinine. The military would do this dumb shit publicly. Fucking public. You imagine that publicly? Like we're gonna send somebody to kill you publicly, and when they die, I'm I'm gonna go. Well, fuck. It's not as though I sent the best. I kind of expected them to die. Yeah, I knew sending people to rape and torture you. You would, you know, I, if I knew sending somebody to try and kill your wife, I knew you would kill the men that I sent in self-defense. Dang. Why, so why, why, would they, why are they sending in a suicide squad? Like, why are they sending in people just to die? Because me and my wife document the military doing really bad shit. We're witnesses to some shit. Right. <laughs> right? We're witnesses to some really horrific shit. Like, hardcore war crimes. Fucking, like, big time. Big time fucking war crimes. 
Big time. Big fucking time. War crimes. You can't hold the world accountable for doing shit and then show the world that the Airborne Rangers and the Marines get to do that shit. That's right. still illegal. doesn't right. matter what fucking uniform you have on. If you say something's illegal and you're actually having people killed for doing it, then your fucking men that are doing it broke the law too. It applies to both sides of the fucking fence. Oh, oh, wait, so are they just trying to get rid of their own men that committed the war crimes then? Is that what they're doing? No, they're, 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 they're now we're getting somewhere. They're protecting the men who committed the war crimes. So I commit a war crime. They send you, they send you to go kill the witness that saw me doing it so that I can, can keep my job. If you fucking die so that they can protect me, the, the military guy who does, does these war crimes and creates suicide bombers so that I can create more suicide bombers. It's a, it's, like, it's a worthy loss. Your life, so we can kill more soldiers overseas, is, is a worthy loss. It's acceptable. Hmm. They come all the fucking time. They're stupid. I'm supposed to be embarrassed. <laughs> like, real life. Like, ha ha. We, we, we fucking, we took your kids and threatened to murder your children. Ha ha. This is a fucking airborne ray. I'm supposed to be fucking embarrassed. They keep coming all the time. I'm supposed to be embarrassed. You guys threatened to murder some fucking children, and you actually got some, some officers murdered. You actually got real active duty fucking soldiers murdered. I'm supposed to be fucking embarrassed. Hmm. You're right. I, listen, listen, I'm supposed it's, to be embarrassed. Yeah. These guys are just stupid. Why are they, what are they doing? Why well, uh, embarrassing me? They're putting me in my fucking place. Huh. Right, 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 right. They're putting me in my, they put me in my fucking place. They put me in my fucking place. They show me who boss, who's the boss. They teach me a lesson. Teach me who the fucking boss is. Hmm. I went up, you know, you didn't teach me shit, but you taught a whole lot of kids some things. So they're just like, threatening oh. you. They're just scaring you. Yeah, it's a Yeah, right now it's just fucking. It's it's. I'm being threatened. I'm being tormented by the American military. It's illegal as all hell. But you're not fucking teaching me anything. Hmm. Right, I'm an old dog. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But you can't teach a bunch of children that the American military will do whatever it takes to protect their right to fuck children and dogs and animals. Why, why am I being tortured? Why me and my wife are being killed and threatened? People break. So, because some senior officers were fucking animals, fucking children, and they believe it's their constitutional right. God gave them the right to have sex with animals. God gave them the right to have sex with children. And if that means sacrificing your fucking lives so some old men can fuck some dogs, so be it. Your life is not worth it. Oh, man. Right. An old man fucking a dog is more important than any American life. Any soldier. That's some so old men fucking children. Most important thing in the, in, in the military today. Protecting the military's right to fuck children and animals. That's their number one fucking goal. Do I feel bad? Am I embarrassed? I'm embarrassed because they tried to kill me so they could fuck animals? I, I'm supposed to feel bad because they tried to kill me so they could fuck children? I feel real bad. For your fucking image, not for myself. Right, right. They're, they're screwing up. What are they doing? Is <laughs> it's only a matter of time before like this is going to become public knowledge and and whatnot? Pretty sure the American military already has a. Here's the definition. crazy part: is they keep asking me for videos and shit. They want you know get us the information. I think that's fascinating. The American, not one branch of the military can gain the trust of the children in my community and the women and get all the information. Think about that. Why won't, some, they won't give the, they won't give the FBI, the police, some of them will, but some of them, they're like, fuck no. Why won't they trust you guys? What did you do? Hmm. You know what I mean? They fucking taught me a lesson. They fucking taught me a lesson. Like, what do we teach the world? What is, what, what is the oath that these American soldiers what does it actually mean? Nothing, right? The, the lesson I was taught, the American oath today that active duty soldiers give and retired, it doesn't mean shit. What did I learn? What did I learn? Mm. What did I learn? Your fucking oath as an airborne ranger isn't shit. Yeah, it's meaningless if you're doing what you're doing. Right? What did I learn? Now, <laughs> you think of... I didn't learn near as much as the kids and the women. That's just crazy. Like, what did I learn? I learned I cannot trust the Airborne Rangers. They're fucking murderers, rapists. We'll do anything. Anything 
for money and power. Fucking anything. Anything. Publicly lie, kill, whatever, anything. Anything. Now imagine what the kids learned watching this shit unfold. Mm. Them keep coming. Mm. That's where it's going to have an impact. Not right now, but like give it 10 years. Yeah, I'm embarrassed <laughs> for the military, not for myself. Their job, you think about when, it, when I had an aneurysm and was dying, every member of the military swore to their God, their country, and their family to protect me and my wife. When I was dying, they swore to protect me. What happened? They tried to kill me. Hmm. When I was dying, they came. When, when you're at your weakest, that's when the Airborne Rangers strike. When your mom is at her weakest, your sister's at her weakest, that's when the Airborne Rangers strike. Because they can't fucking tow up man to man. They can't find somebody healthy who's not dying. How long has this been going on? Like, how long have Fuck they been ever. doing this? Fucking forever. Forever. Like, it's so embarrassing. Like, they're bare. Like now, I know that I know people pay attention now. But imagine being in the military, uh, not not paying attention when I was doing this five years ago. Like, watch them come, <laughs> fucking idiots! Look, watch these guys. Look at what they do now. Remember when they come to your country? <laughs> for a long time, they've been torturing me for a long time. Hmm. They even killed the good guys. I used to have good people that worked for me. They just kill each other. They hmm. all the bad ones just le left. Okay, that's rough. That's really rough. Yeah. I don't know. I, I couldn't imagine going through all that. I don't know how I would how I would survive. <laughs> I don't know how I survived either. Other than I I, I know I'm supposed to be dead. <laughs> Not like after the military leaves, they're like, we don't know how the fuck you survived. But this is a doctor's like, fuck. <laughs> Everything they did is intentional homicide. This is the doctors. Like, you have a kidney failure, liver failure. They're like, that's homicide. They came doing these things as homicide. They publicly tried to kill you. Be careful. This is the doctors. <laughs> Fucking doctors. The military publicly tried to kill you. Publicly. They publicly came and tried to take your fucking life. As an example to the rest of us, be careful. That's a fucking doctor. As an example to me, the military tried to kill you and made me aware of it. I don't know why they're threatening me as a doctor, making sure I don't trust anything or whatever, but just be careful. Neither gonna fuck go to the doctors. Imagine you're sitting at a doctor's going, God damn. They tried to kill you to make it, to make sure I you saw the example. Hmm. I know you've also talked about having a memory loss. Is that related to this at all? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. When you, you when you're the military raping, pillaging, fucking animals and shit like that, you try to kill the witness. You got to kill the witnesses. You got to keep them from speaking. Hmm. In, in real life, my neighbors with the with the military, sex trafficking, women and children. These are about fucking just brutally torturing somebody so they're a willing participant in your orgies. That's illegal as all fucking hell. Right, right. And then and then the military go, uh, we'll kill anybody who stops this. Anybody who stops these orgies of people having sex with animals and children, we'll fucking kill you. That's our God given right. Some men went to war for this. That's nuts. Like, we'll fucking kill you. You stop, You try to stop men from having sex with animals and children, we'll fucking kill you. That's messed up. That's how, well, What do we do then? What do we do? What do we do about it? You just watch them come. Right? This is, I'm a living example. Watch this shit. Watch. In my background check. What's it, what's it my background check? What does it say in my background check? I have a license to take care of sexually exploited women and children, meaning the men who sexually exploit these women and these children will come after me eventually huh. and try to find who fucking came. <laughs> so the kids, right? They got a paperwork and they said, don't worry. See this paperwork? Martin. Right? That's why you're going to Martin. He knows these people are going to come. And I asked him, who the kids see come? Now we get them. This is the important shit. Over the years, who would the kids see come repeatedly? The military. Now you're getting somewhere. There's, 
every one of those me members of the military are so confident in their ability to do choking women out and, and you know, waking them up in the middle of a sex act that's rape. They're so, they've done it so much and it's so successful. They go and do it publicly now. No woman has ever spoken up. Every woman we fucking choked out and then woke up in the middle of raping, they thought they were fucking participating. What? That's literally, from, I, from, I learned this from the Airborne Rangers. They do this, choke the girl out, and then they strip them real quick and then wake them up after they're having sex with the woman. So you, like right now you're fully dressed, they fucking choke you out, strip you, and then in the middle of raping you, wake you up so that you wake up thinking you're in the middle of having sex with somebody. Yeah, but what do you know that yeah, you didn't? That you... No, and that's where the trauma. Is. So if I trauma induced blackout, short term memory loss, all you you don't remember being choked out. You just remember wake. It, you woke up in the middle of an orgy. It's fucking crazy. I watched them do this to people. Then they brought they brought other girls over. In real life, they bought two girls, a blonde girl and a little tiny, a girl with short brown hair, so that I would choke them out and wake them up in the middle of them having sex with, to see if, if I, if, if it works. Like, I mean, it works, but to see if I learned the trait that they were teaching. Wait, why, why, where were you? What, what were you doing? My house. They brought them to my house. They brought girls to my house. So this is they, they bring me your sister and they go, okay, you got to choke her out and then you wake her up slowly in the middle of having sex and then she thinks... She was willingly having sex with you. Why were they showing you this? Why were they telling you this? I don't think they thought I would get better. I was just going to be their, their crony. <laughs> oh, they were trying to use you. I don't think I was, like I said, I'm not supposed to be better. It's how they, it's how they you know. They were showing little kids this. They brought fucking little kids. Not just showed me. Little children they showed how to do. Choke the girl out. And when she's waking up, you're already you're already on top, stripped her, and you're already having sex with her. She can't say it was rape. She doesn't remember. And literally, that's oh. what they tell the little fucking twelve year old kid, or however they can't say it's rape. They don't remember. You got them. They're yours. And now they're embarrassed since you got your friends involved, so you can ask them to do it every week. Telling kids this shit, children. They told children. Oh yeah, you just fucking choke them out like that, and then your friends strip them real quick, and you all start fucking them. When they wake up, they yeah. think that they they don't know. This guy's rant is getting. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's the military. Oh, he's telling me what he's experienced. So. Well, it's, I don't want that in the house. Sorry. All right, take it outside. No, I'll get off so you don't get disturbed. Don't don't all worry. Right, I have one more question. I have one more question for you before uh, before I leave. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's my uncle. Um. All right, so when you talk about the creator, um, what is your image? What is your image of them? What is what it's are you? It's a body. Seeing? It's just a body. It's just a head, a torso, a torso. It's just a body of light, and that's it. But I do have to get off anyways because I got to go get get wrapped up. All right. Well, thanks for talking to me, Martin. Appreciate. God bless. It. Bye. Take it easy.